The power and precision of a drill press in a lightweight portable package. The 4270 will handle your toughest drilling applications. This video will teach you how to get the most out of the 4270. We'll cover assembly, safety, and operation. When you first open the 4270, you'll need to attach the handle. Unlike on many other units, this assembly is completely toolless. It can be easily switched to either side of the machine for right or left hand operation. The stop knob holds the motor in position. You'll use this feature when changing cutters. The gib is factory set to ensure smooth, even travel. However, it may need to be adjusted. Here's a case where the gib is loosened over time. We'll fix this by tightening these set screws. Raise the motor to its highest position. This is the way it should be, smooth and even. We'll be using one inch depth cutters, so we'll leave the spacer at its factory setting. If we were using two inch cutters, we would need to adjust the depth of cut. This is done by moving the spacer to the bottom position. Review and follow the safety rules found in your operator's manual. In addition, there are some rules specific to this tool. Power loss demagnetizes the base. For this reason, always use the safety strap for overhead or vertical work. C-clamp the strap to prevent the tool from sliding down. Clamp beneath the strap, not directly onto it. The magnet requires 3 8 inch or thicker ferrous stock. Never work with thinner material. Avoid non-magnetic stainless steel. Do not use a backing plate with this unit. Coolant cannot reach the plug. Prevent this from happening by elevating the extension cord or gang box. Or arrange a drip loop. If the plug or connection should get wet, Turn off the outlet power before unplugging the tool. Line lockout prevents the drill from starting when power is first applied or after a power loss. Reset the tool by turning off the drill and magnet. The motor magnet interlock prevents power from being applied to the motor if the magnet is not energized. It also prevents the magnet from being de-energized while the motor is running. We'll show you how to drill a one inch hole in one half inch steel. We'll use the best high speed steel cutters available. Milwaukee Electric Tools. The 4270 accepts standard three quarter inch shank annular cutters. With them, it can drill a one and a half inch hole two inches deep. With the chuck adapter accessory, it can drill a one half inch hole four and a half inches deep. The 4270 has the biggest capacity in its class. Annular cutters drill faster than conventional twist bits because they remove only the outer edge of the hole. The result is a faster cut and a burr-free finish. Always inspect your cutters. If they're dull, 
take them to a professional resharpening service. These cutters look good. Keep the shank free of oil and dirt. Foreign material can cause misalignment and excessive drill runout. Notice the plug. Always unplug the tool before making changes or adjustments. Raise the motor to its highest position and keep it there by tightening the stop knob. Line up the two flats with the set screws. Make sure the cutters are fully seated. The surface must be clean and smooth in order for the magnet to adhere properly. Remove any mill scale, paint, or rust. These decrease the magnet's holding power. Clean the base as well. Remove any chips, burrs, dirt, anything that gets in the way. Center the ejector pin over the desired hole location. The 4270 is now firmly secured to the work surface. Lubricant extends cutter life. Fill the reservoir to here. This is enough to drill one hole. When the ejector pin contacts the work, it will release lubricant to the cutting area. When slotting or notching, Use less feed pressure and spray the hogwash directly onto the cut. Make sure to keep the pump away from moving parts and chips. Same thing with overhead or vertical work. In these applications, use an aerosol or paste lubricant. Be careful to keep the lubricant away from the motor or switch. Start the motor with the ejector pin and cutter above the work. Proper technique requires some practice. The key is to apply firm, constant pressure. Here, we're not applying enough force. You can tell because the chips are small and broken. Too little force increases drill time. Hear how the motor is laboring? That means we're applying too much pressure. Too much pressure actually slows drilling speed and can damage the cutters. This is the way it should be. We're applying a firm, constant force. See how the chips are forming a bird's nest? That tells us the feed rate is correct. Never peck drill. Keep constant pressure through the entire operation to prevent chips and burrs from falling under the cutter. Debris under the cutter can make your job difficult or impossible. Withdraw the cutter while it is still rotating. Once the cutter has completely stopped, unplug the tool and remove the chips with pliers. Be careful, these chips are hot and sharp. This video showed you how to use the 4270 Compact Electromagnetic Drill Press. In addition to this unit, Milwaukee has a full line of mag stands, drill motors, and accessories to meet the professional's every need. Mil